Hey guys, welcome to the new Born to Produce tutorial. I am Zorana and today I will explain what Loop Mesh in Cubase is and how you can use it. I've been a Cubase user for years and up until now I haven't really experimented with it. Don't know why, because it is a really fun VST instrument. It allows you to import any audio material, save its rhythmic pattern and then replace some or all parts of the loop with the elements from up to seven different loops. The name speaks for itself. It smashes the loop you want into bits so you can play and have fun with them. Before I go into further details about Loop Mesh, I must mention the other awesome feature that developed from it. It is called Loop Mesh FX. And unlike regular Loop Mesh, this is a processor for effects. This useful little feature was available from the release of Cubase 7.5. And if you'd like me to talk about it in some of the next videos, just post a comment below. Now, let's go back to the one and only Loop Mesh. I've already prepared a Loop Mesh instrument track in Cubase, and with the click on this little keyboard here, there it is. The main part is the track section and there are 8 available slots for importing your audio. There are also volume and transposition controls and settings on the right and similarity gain sliders and master track switch on the left. This is important and I will cover that later. On the top you can count bars and beats and select loop range and here above transport controller are 3 main screens. Slice selection, audio parameters and performance controls. I will explain each screen, the performance controls are especially fun. But first I need to import the audio to the panel. You can choose a loop from the media bay, sample editor, pool or you can drag and drop the file directly from the project window. I will do that because I've already had some samples here. You can use any kind of audio, but since Loop Mesh is all about the beats and slicing, rhythmic tracks work the best. When I put my sample there, Loop Mesh will analyze it and split the loop into smaller bits. And here you can select the range for your loop. You can hear that the tempo of the sample is synced with the project tempo. If you want to keep the original BPM, click on the master button and there it is. So much better. Mm, these numbers are triggering my OCD, so I will adjust it a bit. Important note, if you want to control loop mesh in a project, turn the sync off. The playback of loop mesh within a project is paused if it's on. Now you can preview each slice by moving through the loop with these controls and go back to the first note here. Of course you can always listen to the audio event by clicking on it. Notice how the color of slices changes. Brighter slices are most similar to the currently selected one and this will become very important later. So now, listen to your loop and make sure it is the one you want to use for a rhythmic pattern because with this switch on, it becomes the master track. It means that it will serve you as the reference for rhythm and timbre. Everything you'll hear later will be the rhythmic model of this loop. Now, let's smash some tracks. I will add another loop to the second track. For now, nothing much changed. The second loop lightens up, but the similarities aren't that close to the master track. There are just a few small bits that Loop Mesh replaced. It all depends on the similarity gain slider here. These lines are representing segments, and if you move the slider to the left, fewer slices are used in this process. But if you slide it to the right, those parts have more chance of being involved. For now, it doesn't sound so great, but you can make it better with various functions here in the slice selection and audio parameters window. First, change the number of voices you hear at the same time. 
for now I'm gonna say 2. And then you can experiment with different options here. It all depends on the loop you imported and of course your taste. So play with loop mesh. Here you can select less similar segments, method of calculating similarity, and yes, you can time stretch the sliced loop and adapt its volume so it can sound better with the main track. See the difference when sliding to the dry mix. Ok, let's put another track into the loop mesh. Slide to the right so you can use some sounds from there. It is already better, but what will happen if I change the master track? Let's find out! I will select the second loop to be the bass, click on three voices here and play. Oh, this is even better! Nice, I will just add some more tracks here, I need bass. some pad maybe and to adjust the volume of each track. You may notice that some tracks are a bit out of tune, so there's another great thing here. You can transpose the track you want to make them work together. If you want to store this setting, then go to the slice selection, click on this button here and then click on the pad to save the preset. You can change the name, sure, let's call it Loop Mesh 1. I've already played with this, so I saved some presets and you can store up to 24 of them, so that's really cool. I will use the keyboard shortcuts for changing those loops. And finally, we come to the most interesting part, performance controls. Here you can manipulate the sound of the slices with many effects. Most of the effects you can apply to single slices, with the green buttons for the stutter and slur, and the red buttons for mute, scratch, slow down, reverse, and so on. And for demonstrating this, I will use my MIDI controller. There is also an option of dragging and dropping the slices from here to the sample pads of the groove agent, so you can play any loop mesh sound you like there. You can use loop mesh in many ways, as an instrument in your song or a live tool. 
very useful for any kind of performance. I could play with it all day. I hope this loop mesh tutorial will help you to explore it yourself and have fun. So many options and features, it may seem complicated, but it is very interesting and easy to use. It gives you a lot of space for experimenting and playing, so go ahead and try it. We have a wide range of other Cubase tutorials on our website. For example, Cubase 10 tutorial for beginners and intermediates. So, take a look and see if it's something that can help you to evolve as a musician or producer. See you in the next video.